Good day everyone, this is uh, Jason Santos and for today we're going to continue discussing statistics and probability. This is my uh, fourth discussion on this subject. So uh, for today we're going to cover several ways to present data. You have textual, tabular, graphical presentation. You also have frequency distribution tables as well as a histogram. For my class, what I did is uh, we performed a mini survey and then we have the results uh, in this uh, docs and Google form which I have used as an activity to discuss to them. So when you talk about data presentation, uh, you have to present the data in such a manner that it would cover all audiences that you have. Let's uh, take note that not all of your audience can easily understood black and white numbers. So we have to take into consideration uh, ourselves, um, your financiers, your customers, and some of them would only be able to clearly and easily understand data if it's presented visually. So when you talk of a data presentation that is a uh, pictorial or you use graphs, you use charts, maps, and other methods, you are using a method in such a manner that it would be visualized and easily, comfortably understood by the person. Uh, for our first method, we have what we call as the textual or narrative. When you present data in textual or paragraph or narrative form, one would describe the data by enumerating some of the highlights of the data, like giving the highest, the lowest, or the average values. In this case, there are only few observations, say less than 10 observations, so the values could be enumerated if there is a need to do so. So since we are only talking of the highest, the lowest, and the average, and those observations are less than 10, it would just be um, advisable to use textual presentation. Like for this example, um, I have uh, the poverty incidence for specific countries at a given time. This is between 1990 to 2011. And uh, what we can see here is that um, Indonesia has uh, rose when it comes to poverty incidence between 1990 to 2011. Let me transfer my picture here. And um, Thailand has greatly improved. You see, they were able to maintain their um, very low poverty incidence. Uh, up until 2011. Uh, by any means, what we're just trying to show here is that when you already have a uh, data that is presented using a chart, you have to also use textual presentation, which is what we can see at the bottom. There's a description of the entire chart. It, uh, it shows the source, what are the notes, um, the poverty rates for specific periods, and um, the frequency of family income and expenditure surveys varied across countries. So you see, um, when you have textual or narrative data backing up a specific chart, uh, it is easier for the audience to understood what we are trying to add. For our next example, we have tabular presentation or tabular method of presenting data. Data can also be summarized or presented using tables. The tabular method or presentation is applicable for large data sets. Trends could easily be seen in this kind of presentation. However, there is a loss of information when using such kind of presentation. The frequency distribution table is the usual tabular form of presenting the distribution of the data. In general, a table should have at least three rows and or three columns. However, too many information to convey is in a table is not advisable. Tables are usually used in written technical. So here are some of the uh, clues that you would have to take note of. Whether deciding should I use textual or should I use tabular. First is that you are referring to large data sets. Right? 
So when you talk of large data sets like for example you have here 200,000 and uh, you have 179,000 you talk of populations um, that is already a clue that you need to use tabular presentation also if you have uh, three or more three columns or more or three rows or more then it's a good hint that you need to use tabular presentation otherwise if you have less like for example you only have two you only have one you don't need to use tables for that you just go on and use textual presentation for our third method we can also use graphs these are commonly used in oral presentations these are several forms of graphs to use like the pie chart pictograph bar graph line graph histogram and box plot there's an old adage that says a picture can paint a thousand of words so there are, are times wherein um, people easily understand information when they see the picture like they see a pie chart versus you just present them um, a list of numbers black and white so using uh, graphs like these is a tool that you can use if you are a presenter or you are a student doing a research in order to make sure that all of your audiences easily understand what you're trying to show um, like for example if you have population shown through a bar graph it would be painful to the eyes to just put it in textual or narrative presentation a better way of doing is um, using a bar graph so you can show uh, highlights like what is the highest and what is the lowest another thing I would like to underscore when using graphical presentations is that you don't just use graphs uh, just because right you have to make sure you use the proper graphs at the right time like for example you will use pie charts when you are trying to um, show proportions out of the entire whole like a hundred percent you can also use line graph if you are trying to show trends over time like you have data for years months and hours or time and you can also use bar graphs if you are trying to show levels which one is the highest and which one is the lowest so you see you don't just use graphs um, because this is your favorite graph or this is what I'm trying to, what I feel right now but rather let's try to understand that each graph has its optimum use so you can use uh, Google help or use Microsoft Excel help in order to understand what is the most applicable graph at the game. Next is what we call as the frequency distribution table. I won't be able to discuss this fully in this uh, video because uh, a frequency distribu uh, distribution table by itself is an entire discussion. So what I will just try to explain here is when to use frequency distribution table and uh, what um, are so when you, you uh, when do you use a frequency distribution table um, depends on the data that you have so when you have categorical variables uh, that is one clue that you need to use a frequency distribution table um, it gives you a snapshot of the data it allow, allows you to find patterns the FTT is a special kind of a graphical uh, presentation and oftentimes used for technical reports so this one fdt uh, contains non-overlapping categories or classes of a variable and the frequency or counts of the observation um, falling into the categories or classes so when you have multiple categories or classes that's a hint or a clue that you need to use a frequency distribution table so here you have um, upper boundaries and lower boundaries and uh, if you try to recall how do you get the frequency you just add the class uh, class mark like for example 72 by 8 is 77 you add 70, uh, 8 by 77 it's 82 82 plus 5 is 87 so on and so forth and this is your entire number which is finally our last method of 
presenting data is through the use of a histogram. Um, a histogram is also a, a huge topic by itself. Um, so what we are trying to just show you right now is the significance in when to properly use histogram. Um, a histogram is used to summarize discrete or continuous data. In other words, it provides a visual interpretation of numerical data by showing the number of data points that fail or fall sorry, within a specific range or values called bins. It is similar to a vertical bar graph. However, a histogram, unlike a vertical bar graph, shows no gaps between the bars and uses purely numerical data or spread or dispersion. First, here are some of the clues that you would have to uh, look at in order for you to know when should you be using a, a histogram. It says here that you have to take note, you have discrete and continuous. So in our case, when you say discrete, um, these are countable data. So that's, good, that's for your frequency. And when you talk of continuous, um, the data is for the weight this one that's your uh, continuous uh, data okay so if you have both of those variables in your uh, data presentation then you might consider uh, using a histogram uh, another thing that you would have to consider is the uh, that when you use continuous data you are talking of range of values like for example here the, uh, the weight is 1 to 1.5, 2 to 2.5, 2 2.5 to 3. There's no specific cool number in that particular um, axis. So, if there is a range or a bin of values, then you might want to use a histogram. Here, what we are going to show you is the spread like this one. That's the spread of your data. And when you talk of this uh, this one, that's your dispersion. So if those are the things that you would like to show or present, then you might want to use a histogram. For our activity, let's try to answer the following questions. Um, I suggest that you pause the video right now, answer this activity in a piece of paper, and come back when you are already done. If you are done, now let's continue to the next slide to see the answers. So first, you wanted to show the lowest and highest scores in the class and explain how did it happen. Since you wanted to explain um, the lowest and highest, which are just the highlights, you might want to use textual for our second example, we wanted to find out the probability a person has neither an insurance or savings account. Since um, we have the person which is not clearly um, identified whether what age, what demographic, what gender, so on and so forth, you are talking of um, multiple or several categories. And what we have learned earlier is that when you are considering multiple categories, class sizes then you have to use a frequency distribution table next you wanted to present a report showing the percentage in an entire population who are not yet registered voters so when, since you are talking a uh, percentage out of an entire whole which is 100 percent then graphical is a perfect choice but another clue would be an entire population which could be a large number so, in that case, you can also use tabular since um, when you are dealing with uh, huge numbers of data, uh, the tabular is a perfect option. Uh, nevertheless, you can use any of the, uh, any of the two. Depends on how you, uh, what you would like to point out in your presentation. Next, you have, to con uh, you have conducted a survey and wanted to find out how frequent basketball is in their choices of sports and totals. So, you can use a frequency distribution table since you already have a hint that you wanted to see how frequent right, the basketball is as an option. 
And then finally, you are working as a doctor and wanted to see the distribution of COVID cases between different age groups in your city. So for that, you need to use histogram because uh, age is a uh, continuous variable and um, you would have to uh, know, all right, the specific spread, distribution, and the dispersion of uh, data. So I hope you all have learned something uh, for today's uh, meeting. As always, please follow me on the channels uh, listed herein. And um, please support my channel by liking, subscribing, and uh, making comments in uh, my videos. Thank you so much and to God be all the glory. Till our next video.